Music producer, Yamaster. I'm Adol, music producer and sound engineer. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through some concepts of Ableton Live. Ableton Live is a DAW. DAW is an acronym for Digital Audio Workstation. In this type of software, you can create, produce, and finalize your music. This video consists of four parts. In the first part, I'm gonna give you a brief description about Ableton Live, its features and fundamentals. At the second part, I'm gonna show you what makes Ableton Live actually live. There is a special tool which helps you play and perform live easily, which you can't find in any other software. Well, at the first part, I'll go for clips how to create them, edit and process them. And at last, I'll give you a brief description about effects, like you have heard, compressor, reverb, phaser, and so on. Hope you enjoy it. Hey, I'm Adol. I'm with you with the first part of the Ableton Live Music Production series. In this video, I'm gonna show you the environment and some basic aspects that you will need encounter in the software. At the left side, as you can see, we have two places, one categories and places. On the categories, you have everything in the software, sounds, effects, VST plugins, and everything else, samples, clips, and so on, like that. On the down part of that, we have places. If you have downloaded and installed the packs from Ableton Live software, some website, you can put them here and manage them. We say that if you have any more libraries from your uh, previous versions or anything like that, you can put them here. You have current projects and looks and sounds which can be managed in here. We say that you can add folders by clicking on the plus button here. On the downside of the screen, you have a place for putting your instruments, effects, and samples. And for example, I'm gonna select the instrument. Go for analog synthesizer, select some bus. By double clicking on that, you can see that I have added the instrument in here. We say that we have signal chains and audio effects that can be put here by dropping. For example, I want to put some reverb on the chain to have a special sound and manipulate the voice in some way. I go for audio effects on the bar. Upside, you can write reverb. Yes, you can write some part of that. And I select the whole reverb to put here. You can just click and drag and drop here. Now you have some reverb plus your bass synthesizer. Okay, another thing in the environment and the screen. On the downside left, you have something like an arrow. By clicking on that, you can open it upon the box like uh, named info view. By having this box open, you can put your mouse everywhere on the screen and see some information that defines the part. For example, here I am staying on the button here, chain mixer fold button. This means you can use this button to fold or in or out the chains in the mixer. You can put your mouse everything uh, on everything on every place on the screen select more parts and see the info view i close that for now on the right side of the screen you have a box which is from ableton live you can get a very welcome screen here and some tour of the live and tutorials and something like that and the most important part of the screen that we have now is on the upside as you can see, we have a transport part here for pausing, playing, recording, and everything else. Inside looping, measure, control bar, tapping, metronome, time signature, and like that pre count for recording. Actually, you can see everything in the first screen. On the right side, you have some uh, bars for showing CPU progress bar, MIDI, assigning key, and also you can uh, put this uh, pen button or Put Ctrl B on your keyboard to have a marker and put everything else in its place. Well, let me go for the 
main part of the software that is session view or arrangement view which you can select by putting your click on the vertical and horizontal bars here the first one is the arrangement view which is like any other software any other daw software which you have used before you can add your tracks your audio tracks midi tracks instruments and everything in here record loop and manage them through here plus that you can go to session view which is a special feature of the ableton live software which lets you to play live uh, which i want to show you in here i go for file and select one of my uh, recent projects that i have used here before for showing you the these aspects of the software so you can see we have here some parts some bass drum rack and else i play it easily from here by just playing Yes, I put a space button to stop it. Okay, you can remove the buttons, you can copy the lines and everything else, play some columns together. Yes, that's nice, beautiful. I want to stop this column and just have the bus. One, two, three, four. Hey, you can come here and add some audio effects here. Some phaser. With amount LFO, I want the shape to be a square. Yes, see, it's very easy to play and manage your clips through here, through the session view, which is very beautiful. I say that you can go to arrangement view by putting tab button on your keyboard or just clicking here. You can use the right click on the right side of the screen to add your track, MIDI track, a return and audio. Or you can just use the shortcuts, Control T, which adds audio track and Control Shift T, which adds a MIDI track. And you can put your instruments for MIDI tracks here. I select operator mallet, which is synthesized B4. Excuse me, here. Yes. And I want some clips. You go for. Here. Let me search. Yes. Clips like that. Drag and drop. Well, if we want to just hear the arrangement, we can click on this here. Well, of course, there is anything, one thing else that I want to show you for this video, which is queuing. You can hear and monitor the voices, the clips, the instruments before you can put them here. In the categories, for example, I select one instrument, I search for brass. Just click here and just by the phone. You can have an overview of what this instrument sounds like. I go for a clip. You see, it's very easy. Well, it was so nice to have you here. Bye, bye the next video. Again, I'm gonna introduce you the hardware and software setup in this part of the video series. Well, uh, on the first part, I want to show you the options menu, which is on the top left side of the screen, the fifth item. And the last item here is preferences, which is what we need here. As you can see, you can select all the options. You can configure all the setup on the software here very easily. There are a lot of items on the left column, which is the category. Select which category you want to configure. For the purpose of this video, we just go for audio and MIDI setup, which are our devices and software setup. On the audio column, you see there are a lot of items regarding audio device, sample rate, latency, and test. On the audio device, we select our driver type, which is a ACO now. If you don't have ACO, you can just use the Core Audio if you have Mac or some general one. 
but the ACO is the best. I selected the ACO and under the audio device box, I selected my sound interface card, which is a HDMI audio card. If you have anything else, you can just select it here, but it needs to be updated by the software and your OS, your operating system needs to have configuration, needs to have driver for running it. And the next part, you have your configuration for channels, input config and output configs. You can select which lines to enable as mono or stereo. For example, if you want to record drums, you will need 8 to 12 microphones and beside that, 8 to 12 lines, mono lines to record your drums. Or some sound engineers prefer to use stereo for toms and like that. Output config is your output buses which are enabled in the software and you can use them for queuing and monitoring and listening to that. And some ones just use this for FX, sending and returning to ex external FX processors. Well, on the downside of that we have sample rate. Actually, there are the samples that your converter, your sound interface converter uses for converting the sounds. Which usually is uh, 44.1 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz for uh, audio CDs and DVDs, and you can use more than that if you need more. Okay. Uh, we want uh, high quality, and after that, for setting your latency settings, you can select your buffer size and which options you need to enable, like error correction. We now ignore the test which is out of our scope and go for hardware setup, another hardware setup which is MIDI controllers. As you know MIDI is a standard in digital audio workstations for putting your notes in the software, controlling the software and a lot of options like that. As you can see here, I have some setup here, which is a mixer and it uses the standard Mackie control, I have selected that. I've selected the inputs and the outputs which are connected by USB. Beside that, I have a push. I have Ableton push, a special MIDI controller made by Ableton for Ableton Live. As I want to show you here, it's here. You can configure it and use it as a very good option beside your production tools. If you have any keyboards, any MIDI controllers, more keyboard MIDI controllers, you can add them here by selecting the type and selecting the input here and on the downside of the screen you can manage the control, you can manage what MIDI controllers can do. Of course there are three main categories, remote control, track control and sync control. If you have a big rig, a big studio which needs synchronization between your MIDI devices, you need to turn on the sync part of that MIDI controller. But if you just to use it for tries, for playing your notes and something like that, for controlling the buttons, you go for track and remote. Track is for MIDI commands input and remote is for controlling, like controlling knobs, controlling your drum rack knobs and everything else. It can be configured easily in the software. For my setup, I have used uh, Push 2 for control surface and added it here. I wanted to have remote controls and track controls for putting the nose by pad and controlling the knobs, levels, and a lot of effects, procedures, and features. It's a very good option. So, uh, for getting all together, you can control your MIDI devices here. Audio here, and like that. The last two things I want to show you is for software management. You go for file and folder box. You can here set your current folder for saving the projects and like that. Your temporary folder when you um, start a project and don't save the files are in the temporary project until you save it completely. Your Max application place. Your um, plugin sources. If you use any third party plugins like VSCs, you need to put them here and turn on the on button for using them and just clicking the brass and selecting the place. It gets you all the plugins you have and using all, the, all other softwares here. And the last one is about licensing and maintenance window which shows you which license you have and how many add-ons you can use your software version which mine is sweet, it's the latest one and the most complete one. 
getting update is controlled and everything like that. The last thing is a library which manages your places for putting your packs as I showed you in the, in the previous video where you have installed your packs. Uh, if you have used the previous versions of Live, like Live 8, you can select it here for the library and the user library, which was here I showed you. You can set the place and like that. Now you have everything, every tool you need to for starting the projects and setting up your software and hardware. Hope you have here. Nice by you. Bye.